Hello, this is Nabil Koshaji. Uh, our lesson of today is about salivary gland diseases. And we are going to study four of five salivary gland diseases. The first one is going to be the reaction. And there should be one example for it. The other one is going to be the obstruction with one example, infection. Fourth one is the autoimmune disease. And for neoplasm, it's another lecture. I'm going to divide my board like this here i will light, write the summary at the end that's our photo and that's for drawing let's remember first what happened to salivary gland in normal life the normal histological view of salivary glands we know that we have the acinies and they are several cirrus or mocus i don't care it's just a drawing and we have the canals for sure there should be blood vessels here and there fibers all over the place fibroblast and some white blood uh, white blood cells whether they are neutrophils or lymphocyte or even plasmacyte that's the normal histological view of salivary glands let's see what happens when there is a disease we start with the reaction and we have one example for it which is radiotherapy Let's recall in our minds what happens when a patient got a cancer. I should treat him either with surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, target gene therapy, the new one. Let's stop on these three. These three are a combination of them. In surgery, when I have an access to the tumor, to the cancer, and I can remove it, then I go directly to the surgery. Chemotherapy, when I have several metastases, such as in oral cancers, when um, there is metastasis to the liver or the lungs or the bones, I need chemotherapy to attack all divided neoplastic malignant cells and kill them wherever they are. But I use radiotherapy when I have a point of malignant cells, a mass of malignant cells in a certain place that I can't go through it by surgery. By example, the root of the tongue. If there is a cancer in the root of the tongue and the surgeon couldn't reach it or its margins were not free on surgery, he need to send his patient to the radiotherapy. Now, how does the radiotherapy kills the malignant cells? It attacks the cell with a power, high field power, go through the cell to the nucleus to the DNA and it st uh, start cutting the strips of the DNA pieces. The DNA tries to recover himself to remodel his plexiform, but he couldn't. Then the cell die. For that, radiotherapy, it attacks all the cells that has their DNA exposed to this high power field, meaning they will attack all cells that are proliferating or are highly functioning. Let's go to, the, to our example. The cancer is here. I will start the radiotherapy from outside through the skin, muscles, bone, and in between there is the barotid. After the bone, I have the submandibular gland to the target. 
and going to the other area, meaning all the field is going to be attacked by radiation. And let's have a look here. Fibers won't be suffered from radiotherapy, neither fibroblast or because they are not highly functioning. That also goes to the canals. The only high functioning cells are the SNES cells. They will be attacked by radiotherapy, by radiation, and they are going to develop necrosis. Necrosis meaning the white blood cells would attack the SNI because there is a dead body inside the human living body and what white blood cells won't do that. That's for radiotherapy. It goes to this and it will give me the impression under microscope that the patient has cyanidinitis. The second disease is obstruction and its example is the cyanostones. In cyanostones, we have another gland to be affected. It's the submandibular gland. It secretes, not like the parotid pure serum, it secretes mucus, meaning the saliva coming out of it is more thicker. And it has a long canal to send the saliva to the floor of the mouth. And that's another problem, to the floor of the mouth. So, long canal and thick saliva. If something blocked, a stone was created here. If something blocked the canal, the gland will continue secreting, but it will be filled soon or later. And the minor canals will be filled and the lumens of the acinis will be filled. The acini cell is going to produce saliva and it's filled the lumen. That's a big pressure inside, inside the acini. And for that, the acini goes into dying process necrosis. And again, the white blood cells won't permit a dead body and I have identical, the same, almost identical, the same histopathological view. In infection, mumps like example, it's a viral infection that attack the salivary glands and it attacks young patients and it gives a high fever. But the target of the virus would be the acini cells again. And again, the white blood cells would give me the same impression. Finally, in autoimmune disease with Geograin syndrome, as an example, that affects elder ladies over 40. Uh, it has uh, swelling in both sides. Uh, xerostomia, dry mouth syndrome, no um, tear in the eyes. It's not a happy life for the lady. The definition of autoimmune disease is that the white blood cells stop recognizing our cells as a self cell, meaning they are going to attack these cells. In Jogren syndrome, they are going to attack the acinis in the salivary glands and then tear lacrimal glands, leading to identical the same. Normally, normally, when we study diseases, we study its classification, the cause, and how I treat it. Because our patients are not asking us for the diagnosis. They are asking us to treat them. Normally, unfortunately, dentists and dental students look to oral pathology as a microscope. Only. It's not the case. Here, a big example that several diseases give us the same impression histologically. 
Oral pathology, in fact, is microscope, it's radiographical features, and it's clinical manifestations. By these three, I could have the good diagnosis and understanding the mechanism and to reach my goal, treatment. Now, I have to go back to treat these cases. The first patient had a cancer. I can't stop the radiotherapy because his radiotherapy is affecting his salivary glands. I should continue the radiotherapy and I would ask the patient to drink more water more frequently in his day. For obstruction, the surgeon is going to try to remove this stone, whether it's near the floor of the mouth, it would be easier. As far as we go far beyond to the gland, it would be more difficult. If it's really blocking the canal or inside the gland itself, we might unfortunately remove the gland itself. In autoimmune disease, oops, sorry, infection. Infection, we know that infection is either viruses, bacterial, uh, parasites and so on. So I would treat the agent itself. In mumps, it's virus, so I will give the patient antivirals. In autoimmune disease, the only possible treatment, really treatment, there is no real treatment for Jogren syndrome. Anyhow, we ask the lady to drink more frequently water and you to use uh, artifact tears. And if it's prolonged, it's more worse. We are going to start with corticosteroids, cortisones, and give it, take care for the dose. Don't play with it. It's very harmful. That's our lesson of today. And I would thank you again. Goodbye.